I'm actually on the edge of my faith and I just need one final push to come out of this and I'd like to talk to you about God and uh, hell. Okay. Wh- which God and which uh, hell? Okay, so uh, I'm actually a Christian universalist. So when I say that, I mean that I mean um, I don't believe in actual hell. So I believe that everything and everyone will be reconciled to God, including you and any atheists or any other non-believers per se. I'm, I'm sorry. So, uh, can you repeat that? Because I didn't what? quite. There's some. The connection's a little scratchy. I couldn't quite make out what you're saying. Hello. Yes. You can hear me now. I can hear you, but just. I actually don't. Okay, so I actually don't believe in a hell. Okay, neither do we. Um, so um, basically, I'm a Christian universalist. I believe that everything and everyone will be reconciled to God, uh, including you and any other person. No, okay, uh, so yeah. so you believe, your, your view of this is that even though I actively don't believe in God, that we're all still going yeah. to spend eternity together. Yeah, in heaven. Okay, then what, clearly then belief doesn't make any difference. And if everybody goes there... No, uh, Watch 2410. Yeah, I know. Um, that's, that, that's the major reason I'm calling, because I want to get out of this. It's just that I have a fear in my, in my mind that um, I'm going to be losing out on something in life. But yeah, I have, you, you guys have given me a lot of push, and I'm here for you, for you guys to convince me that there is no God, because well, I uh, am actually at the edge of my that, That's a mistake, now. Sam. It's not up to us or anybody to prove that there's no God. The point is you should not believe that there's a God until there's evidence for it. Agreed. And, and so what is it you think you're going to be losing out on? Because it seems to me that you're already in a position where you're not convinced, but you are acting as if you believe because of fear of losing something. So what do you think you're going to lose? So... Um since I was brought up in uh, an environment for that, I, I have uh, been taught that without uh, God, uh, I will be um, I'll be losing out on major happiness and fulfillment in my lifetime, which I uh, which I won't which I won't get again. And that one that's one thing that scares that scares me a lot. And um, yeah, but apart from that, I have read many of I've read your book and I've read. Uh, uh, a lot of books, but basically, I'm I I I'm finding it really hard right now because I don't know what to do. Well, the thing is, okay, you're worried that you're going to miss out on some happiness in life, but do you have any reason to believe that that's the case? No. Okay, then to me, it sounds more like a threat. It it, it sounds more like, hey, you'd better keep pretending that you believe or acting as if you believe, otherwise, your life's going to be bad, and that to me. Sounds like a threat. Yeah, I agree. Well, then in that case, for me, and everybody's got to make up their own mind, I'm not going to be threatened or bullied into believing something that my mind can't accept. Um, it, it's, it's just not even possible. So, so as I said, um, I, I, I don't believe in a hell, so it makes it even a lot weirder that uh, I, 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 since my childhood, I've been brought up to believe that um, uh, Jesus saved everyone on the cross, including you, including me, and including every human being ever, and uh, we're all going to go to heaven. And it sounds like a nice fairy tale to me, but it, at the end of the day, it isn't realistic. Yeah, I think and, if you uh, went and... I, want to be I don't... I think if you went and talked to a bunch of other Christians, you would find out that they think that that's a fairy tale too, because... Uh, the orthodox models do not hold this notion that everybody is going to go to heaven. That's, that's a rather unorthodox position. So you've already been taught a, a kind of unusual version of Christianity. And one for which there's not only no evidence for, but no good reason to believe. It's like, hey, we're having a contest and everybody wins. Um, so why would you ever buy a raffle ticket if everybody's going to win? I agree. And uh, 
one one more thing that I'd like to tell you is I have actually attempted suicide two times because uh, I used to believe that Earth is a horrible place and that if I actually pass away, I can go to heaven. Now it seems also logical, and I am just realizing what I had actually done. Well, I, I am very sorry to hear that, and I I hope that you get some help. But one of the things is. If you're worried about missing out on happiness in your life and you've already attempted suicide, um, it doesn't seem to me that, that the religion th that is supposed to be giving you happiness is doing what it says it's going to do at all. Yeah. And so uh, I, the first thing, setting aside what you believe or how you label yourself or anything else, um, I very much want to encourage you to reach out to somebody to talk about suicidal ideations and things like that um, because if the religion that you've been taught is true, then this life is just a place to wipe your feet before the real life begins. But if it's not, and, and this is the one and only life that you're going to get, then it has immense value and you should be working to make sure that this life is as good for you as possible, not trying to leave it to get to the better world. Thank you. I, I, I just wanted to clarify because I was in such an emotional trap at that time, and right now I am at the edge of my faith. I am in the literal edge of my faith. And um, Matt, um, I'd like to ask, I'd like to thank you first because you and Mr. Uh, Christopher Hitchens and all these debates that I've, that I've seen um, have convinced me otherwise, but I agree with you 100%. For, for me, it seems like a threat because I feel that I'm missing out on happiness, but thank you so much for, for just letting me know. Oh, thank you. And I'm going to let um, John see if he has anything to add, but I, I would encourage you to also find a local secular group in your area. Uh, skeptics at the pub, Oasis, Sunday Assembly, a local atheist community like this so that you can engage with like-minded people so that you don't find yourself feeling alone because um, you're not. Okay. But. Okay. So, uh, so I guess I'm an atheist now. Thank you guys. Hey! Thank you so much. Hey. And you got a huge round of applause. John, I don't, you, you want to jump in? Yeah, I was just going to say, it, it sounds like you went over the edge just now during this call, but I, I was going to say, in your case, your universalism actually, I think, helps because you don't have the fear of hell, and I think that holds people back the, the most. Um, and, and having the fear of just not having a happy life, fortunately, that's, that lends itself to testing. You, you give up your religion and you see, you know, how's my life going? You can check in. Say well, did the, did that did giving up my religion actually make me more unhappy or less unhappy? And you can see what happens. So, and and also, I'd like to encourage you to to recognize um, atheists. Be, being an atheist doesn't mean that you're going to live some wonderful, happy life that no bad things are going to happen to you. Bad things happen all the time to all sorts of people. I mean, uh, recognizing one. Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry. There's, Hello? there's some kind of echo or whatever. Uh, but I just want to say that having reasonable expectations about what life is and what it's going to be is one of the keys to making you actually happier. It's religions and, and other paradigms set up false expectations. The, the notion of true love, that you are going to find your soulmate and live happily ever after. This is a fairy tale that sets up a, an, a level of expected happiness that you're unlikely to ever reach. I mean, maybe somebody finds that, but by and large, that's not the way life works. And if you have these unrealistic expectations, you're going to find that you're constantly being let down. Now, it doesn't mean that you should throw out all your expectations and you know go the lowered expectations route so that you're constantly happy and surprised. It just means what you expect of life needs to be evidence-based and reasonable. There are going to be great things that happen to you and bad things that happen to you, and that's true for everybody. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for making me realize that this life is very important and I will not get another chance. And I have to make the most out of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Uh, before I go, before I go, I like to ask you for some book recommendations. I have uh, for me to actually start reading right now. Well, it, it would depend on. I don't know. What on what subject? 
on atheism because I'm new uh, and I've actually read uh, three books about the subject. But yeah, any other I've read uh, God is Not Great by Christian Perkins. I've read uh, The God of Illusion and I have read Sam Harris's book. Which which of Sam's book? Letters to Christian Nation. Uh, do you want about morality? Yeah, I, I I can't figure the name out. I, I'll tell you the books that I recommend most often. There's a book called Enumeracy by John Allen Paulos, which is has nothing to do with religion or philosophy. It's about how bad we are at math and statistics and uh, things like that. But it gives you. Okay, wait. Uh, can 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 I write it down? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what is the book again? It's called Enumeracy. I n n u m e r a c y. I n n. Okay. Bye. John Allen Paulos, P-A-U-L-O-S. Um, okay, got it. I recommend that one. Guy P. Harrison has a book, 50 Reasons People Give for Believing in a God, which I think is an excellent primer for everybody to, you know, kind of get started and think about these uh, issues. Um, uh, can you repeat that, please? 50, 50 Reasons People Give for Believing in God by Guy P. Harrison. And by Guy P. Guy G U I P. Harrison. Okay. Um, Got it. And then there are a bunch of others, but g get started with those. And the best thing to do uh, is, you know, I'm sure that there various other hosts and co-hosts have different books that they'd recommend and reading lists. You can always email tv at atheist-community.org, and maybe some other people will chime in. And maybe I'll throw a bug in the ear of. Uh, people on the board and everything else, maybe we should have a recommended reading list page on the website uh, with some of the books that various hosts recommend, okay. just to make it easy. But I appreciate your call, Sam, and welcome back to reality. Matt, uh, so you were uh, making an announcement in the beginning uh, that uh, you could buy tickets for some uh, something that you were going to do in August? In September. September. Uh, what is that about? How can I find out? September okay, uh, September 22nd is the back cruise. You can go to atheist-community.org. That's the website, and they'll probably put it up at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and it should be there on the list of events and calendar and possible to buy tickets there. Okay, so uh, I can buy tickets, right? Because I'll be coming down to Texas in another two and months. Can you see the screen? I, 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 I. Can you see the screen right now, Sam? Oh, yeah, I can. Yep. Yeah, I can see it. There's the website for the back cruise tickets. And yeah, if you can come join us, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for getting me to reality. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you later. Oh, there it goes. That's the a FSM. sign. That's a sign from the FSM <laughs> that it is that it needs to be replaced by a smaller FSM. Perfect. <laughs>